Okay, so um, good day everyone. So we'll be starting now um, Java programming and we already have uh, discussed and um, encountered exercises in terms of problem solving using algorithms and flowchart. And also we have um, discussed about number systems. So we'll now proceed with introduction to Java and Java programming itself, and then later on, we'll be coding our first um, statements or our first program using Java, okay? So, it is important now to understand um, uh, Java and how it works, okay? So, these are the objectives of this lesson. So, basically, a brief um, background of Java, it was... Uh, first created in 1991 by James Gosling and his team in the Sun Microsystems Laboratories. So the first, the first name of Java was Oak, in honor of the tree down outside of Gosling's window. However, it was changed due to the fact that there was actually a programming language called Oak at that time so it was later then changed to java so why james gosling um, created java programming language it was the motivation for creating a language wherein it can be embedded in different uh, consumer appliances or electronic products so it will be the program for automation that will be used on those consumer products or electronic uh, appliances. So one of the first projects developed in Java, it was the use of uh, for a remote control uh, named Star 7. Also, at that time, during uh, from 1991 onwards, it was the, the boom of World Wide Web or, and the Internet. So, nag-gain ng popularity at na time. So, Java, uh, Gosling also in his team realized that Java can be used for Internet programming and applications that can be used in the Internet. So, what is Java technology? First is, Java can become a programming language. So, we can use it as a programming language we can code uh, we can create all kinds of programs using any conventional programming language and java is one of it second is a development environment so java you in java you can code you can compile and you can interpret okay so uh, a compiler later I, I will give a definition but basically a compiler is the one who will read those statements or those code and then um, and convert it into a uh, computer language and then an interpreter will be the one to interpret those computer language upon execution for the processor so a documentation generator and a class file packaging tool Java can be also an a application and runtime environment. So, uh, mga programs in Java, they are a general purpose program. So, you can run it in any machine. We're in, basta, na a Java runtime environment or JRE. So, there are two main deployments of the environment. Katong software development kit, katong SDK or the JDK, Java development kit, or the... Uh, web browser okay so you can also run it uh, in a web browser the J uh, java program so there are some features in java first is the jvm or java virtual machine so java virtual machine is an imaginary machine wherein it is implemented by emulating software on a real machine Okay, kumbaga, uh, you don't need to really in-depth uh, 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 create or discuss whatever inside the Java virtual machine. What is important is that you understand that Java do have its own virtual machine 
to run those software or programs on an actual uh, machines. So it provides mga hardware and software uh, platform specification to which you can compile all Java technology code. The bytecode is a special machine language that can only be understood by Java Virtual Machine. So it is important your environment that, uh, that can be, you need to compile the Java program um, and then the Java Virtual Machine will only read the bytecode that, um, that is produced by the compiler. So, si compiler mag-produce siya ng byte code. Uh, the byte code is a combination of the different number systems and the different languages that only the Java virtual machine can understand, even as we cannot understand what is included in the byte code. So, only the compiler will be the one to compile and convert the statements in Java into byte codes. And then Java Virtual Machine will be the one to read the bytecode's instructions and then it will be interpreted in Java for execution by the processor also under the Java Virtual Machine. Garbage collection thread, um, Java has a special feature wherein it will collect memory allocations that are wasted. Kumbaga, when we allocate memory in Java Virtual Machine, and then it will it was not used for a several uh, it was not used in most of the processes in the program. It will collect it will free those allocation of memory automatically using the garbage garbage collector. So another feature is code security. Code security is attained in Java through implementation of Java runtime environment. So as I said earlier, you cannot run um, programs in Java without the Java runtime environment. Okay, so Jerry, as I mentioned, runs code compiled for a JVN and performs class loading through the class loader and then code verification through the bytecode verifier and then it will execute the code. So si JRE yung mag-execute lahat ng na process of compiling and execution of the code in Java. So again, it will run the code, it will convert it into bytecode, and then Java Virtual Machine will read the bytecode, and then it will load those classes into the Java Virtual Machine. It will verify the bytecode by the virt Java Virtual Machine, and then finally, the Java Runtime Environment will execute the code. So the class loader, which I mentioned earlier, this is the, uh, the feature in Java wherein it is responsible for loading all classes needed for the Java program. Because in the Java program, we need to uh, use parang mga classes uh, in order to execute some of the statements. Kumbaga, dili siyang, I hope you can understand, bisaya, dili siyang maran kung wala tong mga classes ang mga katong mga ang atong program okay so it adds security by it separates uh, the namespace of the class from the actual na mga and it, and it is imported also from network sources the bytecode verifier is part of the java virtual machine it tests the format of the code fragments and checks the code fragments for illegal code that violate right access rights to objects. So it will you don't need to really understand what is inside the bytecode verifier. You just need to understand that there is a code security in Java Java runtime environment. So these are the phases of a Java program. So first the programmer will be editing or write the codes in an editor. In our case we'll be using NetBeans. And then you will compile uh, you will save the uh, you will save the code into a dot java extension so please remember that java has its own ex file extension which is dot java so when you save a file in that means the file uh, the the program is stored in a netbeans project folder and then the file of the the actual codes is 
is saved or stored in a file with a file extension of the .java as shown in this. And then Java compiler, it will be the one to compile and read the codes in the hello.java. So it will also issue errors if it will detect errors in the hello.java. If there are no errors, it will compile and produce bytecode. So the bytecode will be in a form of class, hello.class. So at this point here, the bytecode loader, uh, the class loader and the bytecode verifier will verify, will load the class and will verify the contents of the bytecode, which is the hello.class. And then the Java interpreter in, inside the Java runtime environment will be the one to, um, to interpret whatever loaded in the class, uh, whatever um, produced in the hello.class, and then whatever verified the, by the bytecode verifier. And if it pass or wala siyang errors, it will then execute the code or the hello.class uh, uh, file. So that is the face of the Java program. So this is just a write a program summary. Any text editor, that Java extension, compile the program. So si compiler mag compile niyan. And then it will, the compiler will be the one to check kung may mga errors, may, may mga uh, warnings, or it doesn't have any er error at all. And then file, the file is in that class extension, which is basically the bytecode that is produced by the Java compiler. And then the Java interpreter will be the one to execute the program. And then the output is the actual output of the code. Okay, so these are just the summary. So that ends the lesson for introduction of Java. We will now proceed to programming fundamentals.